Ladies and gentlemen, today is Thursday, April 24th, 2014. And this is the Kang Hill Show, episode 181, where we learn to be better artists. I'm your host, Kim Lafferty, and today we are going to be going into a time lapse with the working of Joseph, which is an original character that was commissioned to me by my good friend Lachlan from Australia. And I'm going to be taking you through a magical journey of time and space through time lapse to show you exactly how I got to basically painting in these details, coming up with pose, learning about flow, setting up colors, and all that good stuff. But before we get into that, I do want to let you guys know that this is the last week for you to get your Emma vinyl decals for your car, window, toaster oven, whatever you want. To get that, all you gotta do is just click that little button right there and pledge 10 bucks. Anyone who pledges 10 bucks this month gets one of those. All right, so enough babbling. Let's go ahead and get into the time lapse, shall we? Mm. All right, so getting this thing started. Um, one of the things that I really like to do nowadays is I like to lay out these rectangles like this, and then I like to sketch the character within them. I don't like to work with the entire canvas because sometimes I like to sketch outside of it like this, and I like to basically think about the frame. Basically, when you hold up your hands like this and you're framing the shot, that's basically what I'm doing with these little squares here. And it allows me to very, very quickly see sketch in these shapes, sketch in some flow, and try to find something that works. So this is one that I was gravitating towards from the beginning. So I started to refine it a little bit, trying to figure out how the sword is the sword coming toward us or is it going away from us, which is gonna look cooler. And of course the answer is always sword coming towards you. If I learned anything from my work at Riot Games, is you should always have the weapon pointing towards the audience towards the viewer and it makes things look so much cooler so yes yes so now I'm playing around with a couple different styles for what I can do for the treatment of Joseph's face I ended up liking this one um, and my client Lachlan said he wanted something that was just a little bit like he loves the, the stylization from Emma but he wanted something a little bit more proportional a little bit more painted so I decided to take it a little bit more towards uh, more of a League of Legends treatment towards the end of this, as you will see in a little bit. But one of the things, one of the most important things I believe to do when someone's commissioning you is to give them choices, give your client choices. Um, because people love choices, right? They don't, they don't want to just have like one thing and be like, this is it, this is all you get, and you gotta be happy with it. You know, charge accordingly. It takes a little bit more time to put these things together, but if your client pays you what you're worth, then they're gonna get choices, they're gonna get quality, they're gonna get an experience as opposed to oh yeah here let me go work on this over in the corner for you know a few days and you're never gonna see it until it's all done and then here it is better be happy with it or else cuz if you don't like it too bad you can suck it and yeah that's it and uh, yeah artisticals that was from <laughs> the second appearance of the artisticals I showed that I, I showed this t uh, time lapse a couple days ago so um, yeah but now these are all together I'm just piecing them all together and we're going from beginning to end on this one. So, all right, so there you can see I've laid out the the things because when I email them, it's really good to be able to have, you know, A, B, C, you know, reference, label your drawings. That way your client can pick which one they like. So Lachlan got back to me and he said that he wanted B. He wanted B. So now we're going to go ahead and begin refining B. Going in, doing line sculpturing. Line sculpturing, as I have been teaching you guys over the past few days. Uh, I drew this little design up here just because it came to my mind. I just wanted to lay it down really quickly. I didn't know if I was going to use it, you know, eventually in the design somewhere. But it's good to just, like, have little sketches up in the side, up in the corner of your ideas, if you think that you might use them. Um, one of the things that I was really trying to figure out is what is, what is Joseph's, like, what, what is his power? What is his motif? What is the reoccurring theme that is going to be happening within him? And uh, I was really liking, like, these, like, like the swoopies of his hair, right? And I really wanted to just add a lot more of, like, those swoops and, like, curved lines going with, like, his cloth and his robe, as well as, like, his blade. It's, it's very slightly curved. Um, and I actually ended up doing, like, a curved hilt at the beginning, if we go back to the, the beginning of this. See how it's like kind of curved, but I didn't like that for some reason. I ended up kind of ditching that and going back to the original sketch, which I will show you here. Um, here's the original references for Joseph. 
Um, just this little sketch really showed me a little bit more of what the sword was supposed to be. I really like that straight hilt. So I went back to doing that. So this is all just, it's all addition and subtraction with the brush and eraser. As I've taught you guys many, many times, this is the way I love to do things. I love laying out values as I'm like switching back and forth trying to like point to something. <laughs> but I love laying out values. And the reason why I'm switching it back and forth so much is because I'm checking. It's like when you take your drawing and stick it in the mirror, you're able to see the things that you didn't see before. You get fresh eyes, if you will. And you can pick out all the little mistakes and things that might not be going right with it. And you can go back in and correct your errors. So that's why I keep flipping it back and forth, back and forth. But I really like this. Um, I really see here. This is where I use a little bit of that motif, like that square thing. It's almost kind of like a chain link type thing. I don't know. I just wanted a little bit of detail or a little bit of a pattern within his cloak, especially since it's like just like going across the entire page. Just a little bit of a little bit of detail there to kind of break up the space. But uh, what was I saying? Oh yeah, just addition and subtraction, and then I'm laying the colors behind it. And then you'll see I'm going to go in later and start painting the lines, painting the lines, as I have taught you guys to do so many times, so many times. If you're curious about that, I mean, go check out my Process with Selena uh, video. Almost all my videos are dealing with this type of thing. All right, so now we're on the home stretch. Home stretch. Not home stuck, home stretch. And we're going to go ahead. <laughs> I saw way too much home stuck cosplay this weekend <laughs> at WonderCon. WonderCon was freaking awesome guys like I was so happy to go to that convention and I'm very happy to see all of you out in Anaheim thank you to those of you who came and visited the booth that was really awesome but that is a conversation for another time and my voice feels a little bit feels a little bit deeper because I'm actually this is like the first time I'm actually talking throughout the entire day I literally woke up probably about a half an hour ago so my voice is still kind of a little bit groggy but it's kind of deep kind of like it I like it but anyway, let's focus on the task at hand. <laughs> you can see now I'm getting into coloring the lines. And that allows me to soften them. It allows me to soften the lines from like a straight black to basically like a darker color of whatever is around it. So it's like purple, the lines are now dark purple. Blue, the lines are dark blue. Blonde, dark blonde. Dirty blonde. And then that really sets up the palette, or it just sets up the picture for really easy, easy overpainting. <laughs> like it's it's so easy I seriously feel like I'm cheating every time I'm doing it I'm like this is just not right this is not what a good artist would do but I don't care but I don't care because it gets the result it gets the result <laughs> so now I'm moving into the overpainting stage you can see right here by the OP layer moving into the overpainting and this is the part where I really like to put in like little like I cannot stress this enough when you guys are drawing hair I think it's really cool to go through here and just like add these little tiny strands that just go through it just just a few you know here and there it really makes your hair stand out and it makes it look really cool so just put those little like flyaways or just the little like one strands of hair just going somewhere and it'll make your hair look really nice I, I really like to do like big shapes and then a couple little strands coming off here and there and that is my tutorial on semi-realistic anime hair. So, uh, moving into the face, I I'm noticing I'm really, really becoming a big fan of just shapes. I love making like hard contrasting shapes on the face. It's kind of a mixture between cell shading and like more realism. I just, I freaking love it. I freaking love it. I don't know. I had a little bit of trouble with this arm here. I was actually using my mirror. For those of you who know, I have my mirror over here. My good old fashioned mirror. And basically what I do whenever I'm stuck with a pose type thing or like an expression, I just go over here and I make the face into the mirror. Or for this, for this in general, I was actually like swinging my arms like this and just paying attention to how the, the muscles like line up, like looking at myself in the mirror. One of these things is really handy to have. I would really recommend you guys getting a floor to ceiling mirror for references or just taking a picture. You can always take a picture with your webcam, you know, like a little timer on it. You just click it and then do the thing and then just pay attention to how your muscles like line up like how the little carpy this is called the carpy right here carpy just like overlaps the bicep stuff like that little things like that because those subtleties with your shading will really push your drawing to the next level and I love doing things like that see just like that little tiny thing I end up redrawing it but 
Um, stuff like that, you know? <laughs> it makes your muscles look really nice. Really nice. And I like characters like this that are not like super buff, right? They're more like athletic and they have a little bit of muscle. That way it makes it easier to like reference my own arms. And it makes it, like I said, I reference my own arms for athletically strong men and females, right? Because, uh, you know, I basically have Riven's body, Riven's sexy body. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it comes in handy, it comes in handy. So I, I just don't like to work out because I get too big, too fast, you know? Like I'm one of those guys. <laughs> have you ever heard somebody say that? Like, oh man, I don't like to work out because I get too big too fast. Oh man, that's such a problem. I hate getting too big. I hate getting too big. Better not work out. Better just sit down and play Call of Duty all day and drink Gatorade because you get too big too fast. Anyway, that's another conversation for another time as well. We have tangented twice today already. So anyway. I'm getting back into this. Um, I'm using a darken layer, or rather a multiply layer here. And I'm going back in and I'm kind of adding a little bit more darker values into things. Let's go ahead and go back and watch that again. So you can see how everything is a little bit, I mean, it, it's pretty good. It's pretty good, right? But I want to start adding in some really darker values. So I'm going to make this, um, I'm going to make this layer in probably a couple seconds. Come on. Come on. Come on. As soon as, soon as I finish this. Oh, and the other thing I need to talk to you about, guys, is I was taking breaks. I was taking breaks the whole time I was doing this. That's why it turned out properly. That is why I didn't have a lot of trouble with this. I would literally be working for 26 minutes or a half an hour. Then I would take a break for a half an hour, and I would write down all the little things like, hey, I should probably add some darker values up in this leg and just up in here. I really need to redraw those muscles. But rather than slaving over it and be like, oh, man, like, oh, that arm looks like crap, and i got to get back in there and do it, I just pull out my notepad, just pull out my little notepad, and I just write down my notes, like, hey, put some darker values up front, fix that arm, fix the eye, blah, blah, blah. And then I come back, and then I just check it off, check it off. It's super, super simple. It makes drawing so much easier when you take breaks. I cannot stress that enough. I've told you guys that so many times. And I won't stop telling you because it works. So try it out. Okay, so here I am, see? Adding in those darker values. And the sword, basically anything that is closer to you, I like to make the values, specifically the shadows, darker. Because it just completes that illusion that something is coming closer to you. And we like that. We like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh, I think we're going to start finishing up here, do the last little OP stuff. I'm reptar brushing now. Which is basically the, you can get all my brushes by clicking the link down below on YouTube. And I'm going back through and see how, see the difference between this line right here. See how that's kind of like blurred and kind of not really refined versus say like over here, it's a little bit sharper and it has a little bit of that texture, a little bit of that texture going on. That's me going in with the Reptar brush and adding some more sharp edges to it. Because when you make sharp edges in your drawing, even just a few of them, it makes it look a lot more professional and a lot more finished, even though you barely did anything. So I highly recommend you guys going through and doing little things like that, adding in those little sharp details, sharpening up the edges of your character, because it'll make it look super clean, super precise, and freaking awesome. So I love that. Here's me redrawing those muscles, referencing myself in the mirror as I'm doing this. If I had time lapse myself, you know, working on this, you would see me like back here and be like, mm, 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 mm. but I didn't. I didn't. And if I did, I'd be covering myself up anyway. So, sign it. Good, good, done. Light it. All that good stuff. Oh, by the way, let me show you guys a little trick to how I did this. You'll notice I'm making it look like the background is like this white light, and it's kind of blowing it out, blowing out right? And it's spilling into uh, the actual character. It's spilling into the actual character. And I'll show you guys how I did that. It's a special little technique that I like to call... The bright white background. And I kinda I haven't done it before. I haven't done it before up until now. But um it works pretty dang well and it looks cool. So I'll show you guys how to do it. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a, a stroll back. Let's take a stroll back to this. Okay, so originally, here's our character. Yeah, yeah. So here's our character, here's all of our layers. Alright. Here's all of our good old fashioned layers. You'll notice I actually really like to, like here's a bunch of the OP stuff. I really like to condense my character into one layer at one point, but I'm always 
saving the old ones, right? I'm always duplicating these layers. Like if I need to go back, like here's all the lines and here's all the colors, right? Before the OP stuff. Um, and I really like to just copy those up and, and merge them because it just, I don't know if it's just like mental or something, but I really like thinking of, okay, this character exists on one layer now. And if I need to go back, I have those additional layers and stuff from before, but I really just like working on one layer. Anyway, okay, so I've got these things. I did some, you know, cleanups. Here, let me actually show you guys what the OP stuff does, the OP layer does. So um, here is, here's the darkened layers. Here is the darkened layer. I'll turn it on and off. So you can see what that does. It adds that extra set of values to it and it darkens the areas that need to be darkened. And basically the way I like to think about it is things that are further away from the character, I kind of like to gradate things up to the character's focal points, which in this case is Joseph's face and his, you know, his hand. Skin, I think, is a very, very important focal point. Wherever the character's skin is, it's just your eye is going to naturally gravitate to it. So I darken things like, hey, you know, like this bandage and his shoe in front. We don't really need to look at that. Right? That's just complementing what he's doing. So let's darken that down and kind of gradate this right up to here and add some more. Basically what it's doing is it's adding more contrast. See how his skin contrasts greatly against the darkness of his armor? Whereas down here, it's all very, very dark values. Like the bandages are dark, the pants are dark, so you're naturally just going to automatically go up there. And we like that. Now, Reptar brushing. See, here's what Reptar brush does. Turning it on and off, on and off on and off. And again, it's very, very subtle, very subtle. But you can see, I'm just cleaning up those edges, cleaning up those edges. You guys do this in your artwork, it will look fan freaking tastic I kid you not. Just go back in there and clean up those edges, add in a little bit of like sharp noise, a little bit of sharp texture, texture, excuse me. And yeah, it'll look freaking baller and you'll be a baller artist. And then here's a little bit more OP stuff here. Here's me redoing the muscle after looking at my own massive arms. And a little bit of change up in his face. A little bit of like reflected light. Ambient occlusion, you could say. I don't, I don't know. I just soften those shadows a little bit. But it makes a big difference, yeah? Yes, yes, yes. Then we go ahead and we even flatten those. We even flatten those. And we go up again, up again. Did they do another multiply layer? I think it did. Oh yeah, look, I even did another multiply layer. I did a multiply, ugh, multiply layer, that's a tongue twister. Multiply layer on his hair, as well as a little bit more down here on his foot. And you'll notice as I push this foot back, I just put more atmosphere in front of it, so it almost becomes like a shape. And that again, helps to complete the fantasy that something is going back in space. And then you have this dark foot in front, and then light foot in the back. I just, I, I love doing stuff like that. It makes it look really cool. So, an, yet another multiply layer. All right, but now it is time to teach you guys how to do the bloom technique. The bloom technique. This here, basically. It's just that subtle thing that makes it look like the background is blooming out over top of the character. So here's the way that I go about doing that. You're going to take your magic wand. And you need to have, I cannot stress this enough, you need to have clean edges, as I teach you guys to do. Clean edges. So go ahead and select everything around your character, around your beautiful character. And this is actually going to be going in front of him. Okay? This layer is going to be going in front of him. So you can see here's our character right here. Over top of that is going to be our bloom. You just call it bloom. Okay? Then go ahead and take like a white or like almost white and just go ahead and fill that whole selection that's in front of your character. Okay? Then deselect that. Now you have a white basically cutout of your character. See that? That is what you have. That is what you will use. So now what you're going to do is go up to filter, and then you're going to go to blur, and then you're going to go to Gaussian blur. And then I set mine to 25 pixels. But you can basically, you can see what it does to your character here. Like if you want like a lot of spillover, you could do that. I think it looks good right around, you know, like 25, 20, 25 pixels. See, it creates that really cool glow effect, like something is really bright behind him. Almost like a photo shoot type of thing. But yeah, basically the less you do, the more subtle it will be. I like to make it more subtle. Hit OK. 
And then you can also play around with the opacity over here. You can lessen it and increase it. So that's basically what I did. And that's how you can do it at home. All right? So let's go ahead and finish up here. So that was our final thing. Went through and did a little bit more color, contrast, brightness, darkness, uh, tweaks to it. Because I'm always like, I always feel like I'm seeing the image brighter than other people because my, you know, like the monitors get brighter the like more you look from above them. So I always like try to like put my head down and look at it straight on and say, is are these the colors that I want? These are not the colors I was looking for. And then I go back and I, I fix them up. All right. So I think that's about it. Did a little bit more overpainting here. Just kind of clean those things up. But he, here, okay, okay. This is important. I almost skipped over this. I almost skipped over this, and that would have been terrible. This is what happens when you take breaks, okay? I said, okay, I'm done. I'm going to submit this to Lachlan. He's going to love it, I'm sure. Maybe. I don't know. He said he loved it, but <laughs> I not to really fool myself. But I took a break before I submitted it to him because I wanted to say, okay, any last things that I need to do, any final little ch touches that I need to do, all right? And then I found this. What is that? It's dirt on his back hand. And like some little things over there. And I think I changed something on his face too. But like little, little things at the very end. So I went through there and I cleaned that up. Right? See, so cleaned that up. Changed a little bit of his nose and his mouth on his face. Right? And those things make a big difference. Those are the last little things that you need to do. Final little touches. And I'm sure there may be could have been more. I don't know. But I took a break for about an hour, you know, final touches, and then we were done. Oh, and also, like, when I like when I go on breaks and I have ideas, I also like to do this. I'll just make a notes layer, and then I'll just put my notes here. Like, hey, I want this sword to be thicker. Uh, sign it when you're done, and you're good. Uh, darker here. Watch those ellipses on his arm, because it's supposed to be coming at you, not away from you. And turn this into a shape that says shape. And that's that's my writing. I can read it. It's like Leonardo da Vinci. Only it's in code. Only I can read it. Okay. All right, and that, ladies and gentlemen, is going to end episode 181 of the King Kale Show. I hope you guys learned some good things today. Thank you for joining me live on YouTube. Not live on YouTube. <laughs> Thank you for joining me on YouTube. Thumbs up if you like it. Thumbs down if you don't. Once again, if you guys want to get an Emma decal for your car or toaster oven, computer, whatever you'd like. Just go ahead and click that button, and we'll all be happy. Remember, you only have till the end of the month to do it. End of the month, and then they're all gone. Unless you see me at a convention, then I'll be selling them. Or if I finally get off my butt and make an Etsy page, but I wouldn't count on that. You guys take care of yourselves. I'll see you next time. Till then, take care.